Good morning students I am Supriya Dinodia assistant professor department of english pandit jln government college faridabad today i will discuss middle english literature second period that is from 1350 to 1400 in this lecture i'll discuss political and social scenario chaucer lived through the reigns of two kings edward iii and richard ii and saw the beginning of the third henry iv His age presents a glaring contrast between its earlier and later years. English became the language of the law courts and of the parliament. The victories of Cressy and Poitiers roused a new spirit of national unity and pride but produced little literature except few patriotic songs. The great plague or black death had devastated the land. Labor shortage low wages and high taxation to meet the cost of the anglo-french wars had greatly increased the misery of the masses the poll tax levied by richard ii led directly to the peasants revolt or wat tyler's rebellion which was put down with heavy hand there was corruption in the church bishops amassed great wealth and lived a life of ease and luxury this general corruption in the church roused john wycliffe to a fury of reform through his pamphlets and preachers his followers came to be known as lollards and their movement lollardy the movement was mercilessly suppressed the reformation in england was delayed by 150 years john wycliffe also called the morning star of the reformation had however done his work not only by his crusade against the corruption of the church but by translating the gospels into english the first translation to appear in any modern language during this troubled period english poetry entered upon its first blossoming season the two races had become one and in spite of many sided social unrest there was a general feeling of national independence and pride this new born spirit found expression not only in satire denunciation and lamentations but also in the joy of life we will discuss major poets in the age of chaucer first william langland the last great poet to write in the anglo-saxon alliterative verse the traditional author of pious plowman the vision of william langland concerning pious the plowman is a huge poem of alliterative verse which is divided into a large number of cantos the prologue describes how on a may morning the poet that is will fell asleep by the side of a brook a river on the melvern hills and saw in a vision or dream a fair field full of folk pious plowman it is a, a bustling scene crowded with people of all sorts honest as well as dishonest plowmen merchants minstrels pilgrims hermits friars farmers pardoners and churchmen all feature in this poem the cantos then develop the allegory a lovely lady that is the holy church appears and tells the dreamer to seek the truth that is god on his asking what is truth she tells him it is love the other characters are also introduced pious plowman falsehood represented by false friars lady meat reward in bad sense that is bribery conscience need the folk theology wit wisdom and wrong the confessions of seven deadly sins are common in medieval literature these sins are pride luxury envy wrath avarice gluttony and sloth the repentant crowd decide to start on their pilgrimage in search of truth but no one knows the way at this point appears pious plowman who promises to lead the company after he has plowed his half acre of land he asks everybody to work hard at his job and those who refuse or shirk are made to work by hunger 
The poem in its first version ends here with the poet's passionate plea that only good works can obtain salvation and not pardons and indulgences. The rest of the poem comprising second and third version is the sequel to the first and contains the triple version vision of do well that is do well, do bet that is do better and do best that is do best. At the end mercy is shown triumphant over strict justice. It is a didactic poem aimed at religious reform. Roused by the degenerate Christians of his times, Langland lashes out against the vices of the clergy, especially their gluttony, sloth and avarice. The poet attacks social and political inequities. Hero, a plowman, is a rebellion or revolutionary. His aim is not to destroy society but to improve and purify its moral life. He idealized pious because he comes nearest to the ideal of a Christian, Christ having identified himself with the poor and the humble. The poem has vigor, intensity and sincerity. The author spoke for the people. Then we will discuss John Gower. John Gower was a court poet. Geoffrey Chaucer dedicated his Troilus and Cressy to Gower and referred to him as Moral Gower. He wrote in French, Latin and English. His French works consist of 50 ballads or love songs, one poem Speculum Meditantis, a long sermon in verse on the immortality of the age. Latin work Vox Clementis is concerned with Wat Tyler's rebellion of 1381. Though not in sympathy with the popular cause, he vehemently denounces the social evils which had led to popular disaffection. The poem ends with an appeal to the high and mighty to mend their ways and listen to the voice of the people which is the voice of God. English work consists of Confessio Amantis. It is an enormous poem of 14,000 octosyllabic lines. The subject is love, not because it is to the poet's taste. He would rather write a moral book, but because people preferred amusement to wisdom. The poet approaches Venus, goddess of love, who asks him to make his confession to her priest, genius, a personage borrowed from Romain de la Rose. Before hearing the confession, Genius tells him stories to illustrate the seven deadly sins and their subdivisions so that the poet may know if he is guilty and confess accordingly. After the confession, the poet is mocked and dismissed by Venus as being too old for love. He is advised to stick to morality, which he had pursued so long. Gower shows power and fluency of narration, but is dull. Though he had enough learning and was not lacking in grace, he was too puritanical to write successfully of love. He lacked vivacity, charm, humor, qualities which Chaucer possessed in an eminent degree. For reference, I have used History of English Literature by W. H. Hudson. I will discuss Geoffrey Chaucer in next video. Thank you.